y'all. I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journal process video for you. I'm working in my Dilutions art journal. This was my first entry I did a couple weeks ago. So today I'm just going to turn to a new page and start a new entry. I'm going to begin this one with Distress Oxides. I have in my head that I'm going to use acrylic paint after that. So I guess we will just see how it goes. I will link everything that I end up using down below. Otherwise, I'll put you guys on fast forward. Let's go. All right, I covered my surface with a towel because I wanted to start with spray. And normally I would spray in a box, but this is a really big art journal, so it didn't quite fit. So I decided to go with some Distress Oxide Spray. I went with Tattered Rose, Spun Sugar, and Victorian Velvet. And you can see I'm kind of working in a diagonal here with all of these pinks being pretty generous with how much I'm using to kind of create this line effect across the page. In the end, you won't really see the lines. There's, these are going to blend really nicely and I'm going to add some more layers on top. But it was so fun to use my Distress Oxide sprays again. I just forgot how fun they are to see as they dry. So I let this dry just a little bit and now I'm going with some blues on top. I chose, let's see, Stormy Sky, the brand new um, prize ribbon. I'm going to use that at the end and then faded jeans because I was going with this pink and blue feel. I actually want to do kind of a fall theme page in a way. I was inspired by the new Cinderella movie that's on Amazon Prime. I've been listening to that soundtrack like crazy with my daughter as we were driving to and from soccer. Um, and I just love the soundtrack. I think it's super fun. I think it's a great um, take on the Cinderella movie. And so I was inspired by that. And that's kind of what I'm going with. So we're going to have a Cinderella feel on this page. I let it dry. And then I sprayed that water, just pure water on top so I could get some drip effects. And now I'm going with that prize ribbon blue on the bottom because I wanted um, a darker blue kind of concentrated at the bottom, dripping the other way. So you had these different effect line effects going on. And you can see as it starts to dry, it's really lightening up and you get this beautiful chalk effect. And when you look really closely, there's lots and lots of cool oxidizing that is happening on the page, um, which is definitely fun to play with. Okay, so I let all of that spray dry. So one of the hardest parts about doing art journaling is that you really have to let the layers dry in between. And that, of course, is not always my strong point, but um, I was really careful to do that in this case, um, knowing that they would react anyway when I add, added something wet on top. So I just wanted to um, make sure it wasn't going to turn into like a big mushy brown you know, mess on my page. I wanted to use this little quarter circle as a pattern. I was inspired by a pattern that I had seen online and kind of wanted to recreate it. And it was made from all of these quarter circles. And so I'm kind of just putting this in the background. Um, I sped this up a lot. I just used this piece to trace around in pencil. Pencil worked just fine over top the Distressed Oxide inks. And I'm going to put it in four different places on the page. Originally I had planned for three different places and then it just didn't quite um, look right to me. So I filled in a fourth one over here in the bottom corner just for an extra little piece right there. Once that is done, I am coming back over the top with some Jane Davenport paint. So this is just a really light pink paint. I chose this one because it wasn't going to dry with a shine and I didn't want to. I wanted it to be matte. Um, I sped this up a lot. I promised myself when I made this art journal page that I would not rush on the page. Sometimes when I'm doing an entry for a video, it causes me to kind of want to rush through it just so I can get it done and get to the video editing process. But I feel like that maybe has been putting a uh, a clamp on my creativity. So I decided to slow down, take as much time as I thought I needed for this page to just enjoy the process. And it really made all the difference. And I know as someone that really likes to finish projects, like whether I'm sitting down to work on a scrapbooking page or a planner page or something like that, <clears throat> I really like to finish it completely. And so sometimes I rush and I think that that really has been affecting my creativity. So I'm trying to slow down a good amount. 
Of course, I've sped this part of the video up a whole lot because this isn't very exciting, me just filling in these shapes with the acrylic paint. Um, but I just wanted to let y'all know that sometimes, I mean, I, I go through the same things other people go through as far as like creative blocks or feeling like um, your projects aren't turning out the way you want them. It just happens to everyone. And sometimes you just have to change up your process a little bit. And in my case, that meant slowing down, just slowing down, taking my time. And in the end, I am super pumped with how this page comes out. I think it's absolutely super fun. So I'm adding a second coat to some of these. As you can see, the Distress Spray reacts when you put any wet medium over the top of it, including um, acrylic paint. So you are going to see it still coming through and that is perfectly okay with me. I knew that that was going to happen. So I was definitely kind of all about that. All right, so the next step is adding in a little bit of dark blue accent to each of these shapes to kind of emphasize the corner of the shapes. You get a cool feathering look, which is what I was going for. Just adding a little bit of this blue. To me, these are kind of going to serve as like abstract leaves. I know they don't really look like leaves, but they're going to be my abstract fall leaves. And this blue and pink might not be a typical fall color, but I'm going to be adding some more fall elements on the page. And so that will kind of serve as the fall color in the end. I thought that was a fun um, little bit to add that the dark blue. I, I like how it brings in a little bit more darkness to the page. All right, and now to start working on the main element that I wanted for this page, and that would be a large pumpkin. I am using white gesso. I knew that the Distress Oxide would continue to react and come through, but the white gesso is the thickest white that I could think of. If I had used white acrylic paint, it would have turned a uh, color right away. So the white gesso is really kind of priming the area that I'm going to be layering on some more paint for this pumpkin. Um, again, this is kind of inspired by Cinderella. So we're thinking Cinderella's pumpkin, so it's not gonna be an ordinary pumpkin. It's kind of like a magical pumpkin, but the gesso is, like I said, setting the stage and I'm laying it on pretty thick so that it blocks out a lot of the color. Again, I don't mind if some of the color comes through and you'll see I'm going to add some shading and some different colors to this particular pumpkin. Um, but I wanted it to have a pretty good base of white so that as I added some different colors over the top, they weren't going to get lost with the Distress Oxide spray just coming through the top. So you can see I'm trying to emphasize some of the curves. I'm using my brush strokes as texture to kind of show you the shape of the pumpkin to add a little bit of dimension. So I'm making sure that the brush strokes are in the curves that I think the pumpkin would be, um, would be going in as well. All right. Now I pulled out some acrylic paint and this time I've used target acrylic paint because it does have a shine to it. It has kind of a satin finish and I thought it would really pop off the page nicely because everything else on the page has like this dull finish or this matte finish um, with the Distress Oxide. So I'm adding some pink into it, um, into the pumpkin. It's not solid. I'm just adding some brush strokes that are emphasizing again the shape of the pumpkin. I'm going to add this pink and then um, one that is slightly darker, that's this fuchsia, um, to kind of bring in some kind of magical elements, just some interest to the pumpkin as I'm kind of emphasizing it and having it jump out from the background that it's on. The next color that I'm going to bring in is kind of a sky blue, a really light blue, um, just to add a little bit more of the blue. Again, this is just a different kind of color palette for me, and I am digging it. I think it's fun to take kind of your everyday objects and change up the colors on them, bring out some different colors that um, you maybe wouldn't normally see. So adding in a few hints of blue here and there, and then I'm going to go with that fuchsia. I'm going to use that to kind of set off the stem up here. I didn't want to bring in brown, and so I'm going to use this um, pink to set it off, and then I'm actually going to bring in a little bit more of that matte pink that is in the background shapes that Jane Davenport just to um, change it up a little bit and to add a little bit of dimension to the pumpkin as well. You can see this process took a little while just adding all these different layers of color. Here's where I'm going to go with some dark blue and then the pink as well. Um, this took a while and it was just a fun process to kind of play with to use the different brush strokes as they kind of just went through. You can see I'm trying to add just a little bit of that 
matte pink in there to tie it into the background just a little more and then I went much heavier on the stem to kind of give it that brown feel without going all the way brown adding some shading at the bottom and then the hardest part was probably playing with the dark blue just because it was so dark and I had to kind of try to blend it but wanted those to be the lines that stood out that really defined the shape of the pumpkin so it was kind of a whole process but I loved working on this pumpkin and I love the coloring that um, came out in the end. It is definitely fun to play with different sheens of paint um, just to give you some cool effects when you are working with them together. So like I said the target is that satin finish and then the Jane Davenport one of the reasons I really like it is because it is that matte finish it makes it easier to journal on top of to add writing on top of um, in an art journal so that's one of the reasons I love it. All right, adding some just water down here at the bottom and it reacted with the Distress Oxide to help give a base for that pumpkin to kind of live on. And now I'm just adding some fun pumpkin vines that are gonna kind of break up the rest of the page a little bit, break up that background. Um, and I will add those in the dark blue. I once again was still kind of unsure of what the pumpkin leaves were gonna look like. And I'll be honest, I decided not to go Google them. So I just stuck with just the vines. This is my magical Cinderella pumpkin anyway. So it's okay if it doesn't have leaves because it's about to turn into a big carriage. So um, that's that was okay with me. So adding the vines and then the last thing I'll add as far as the paint the image is some white splatters because a I love white splatters and I thought it'd be nice to kind of brighten up some parts at the top that were looking a little bit dull to me so adding a few white splatters with acrylic paint and then I will add the quote that I had intended and it's from a new song that was part of that Amazon Prime Cinderella movie um, and the quote is if it's a million to one I'm going to be that one and I considered whether I should write it directly on the page I ended up deciding to type it out on a separate piece of 32 pound white paper. I'm adding black boxes around all of the words and then I will cut those out and just adhere them on to my final page just so that the words can really stand out from the background. And that will be it for this art journal spread. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. Um, I'm super pleased with how this entry came out and I'm really enjoying this new art journal. It is nice to have such a big art journal to work with and um, it's been fun so far. So I can't wait to keep going through it. I will link all of the supplies that I used down below, the ones that I can find. Sometimes those Jane Davenport acrylics are a little bit hard to find. And, and then of course the Handmade Modern line at Target is no more, but they do have a new line that has replaced it that looks very similar. So I will um, definitely link that below. I want to give a huge shout out to my Scrappy YouTube members. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you would like to find out more about Scrappy YouTube membership, then make sure to click the join button or there is a link in the description box below. All right, I hope that you have a fabulous day, and as always, keep it creative.